start. But I've got notes, but I can't see them. So I'll start. I'm Mont Taylor. Uh, I'll twist the hands on and carry on. Okay. I'm talking about my grandma's top curry tips. So I've been inspired by the World Curry Festival that's coming up in Leeds. Not quite sure why it's in Leeds, I'm not in Bradford, but anyway. Um, we, my grandma uh, gave, handed these down. We come from an area called Gujarat in India, so this is all Gujarati food. Um, so there's some pretty classic kind of things in here. This is chapati, this is kadi. Um, so although this is Gujarati, it probably won't apply to a lot of the Indian that you know and love. This is Gujarat, in blue, northwest part of India. Uh, Bombay's about here, if that helps. Um, and so that's where my family's from. Oh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I've been given a torch. This is my grandma. We call her Ba. She's 72 years old. She grew up in India, then moved to Africa, where she catered for seven families, husbands, wives, children. They all live together. So she's pretty amazing. She still caters at all our family events. Um, this is my spice tin. So, Indian food, you need decent spices. We've got chilli powder, fenugreek, mace, turmeric, uh, mustard seeds, and I'll come to that stuff later. Uh, I don't know what it's called. So, I'm going to start off. So, my first tip is chilli and salt are your perfect partners. Um, if you've made your curry too spicy, add some salt. It usually tones down the heat. If you put in way too much, then even salt's not going to help, and you might as well just give up and chuck it in the bin. Um, salt. You need salt in your food. But most, I don't use salt at home, but you, and you guys probably don't very much at all, but you really need seasoning in your curry. It just won't work without it. So if you put those spices in and it's still tasting rubbish, add some salt. It will sort it out. Garlic. Don't be shy with garlic. So one or two cloves isn't going to help. You need like half a bowl in your curry. It's going to make you stink the next day, but it's better than having a crap curry. So get loads of cut garlic in there, otherwise it's completely pointless. Every curry starts with flavouring your oil. We never put garlic in your oil, it burns. So these are kind of typically some of the things that you'd stick in your oil. So this is cumin, fenugreek, mace, cinnamon and cloves. Only one of them, not everything. Um, coriander. So we don't put coriander in the curry, we use it as a garnish on top. So just before you serve it up at the table, sprinkle on some chopped coriander and it will be really, really lovely. Um, if you don't like it, leave it off. Those people don't like it. So this is um, coriander seed and cumin ground together, and it's a kind of curry maker. It's what loads of curry restaurants put in their stuff, and my mum goes a bit mad because they go a bit mad, chuck it in everything. If you put it in everything, everything will taste curry. It's like a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> ginger. This should be fish and ginger, but my bar always says never put fish and ginger together. We never have fish and ginger curries. Supposedly, it makes... The Fish fall apart. So we, I've never had it, so I wouldn't even know. Um, these are four things that go in every single curry of my house: salt, chili powder, fresh chili, and turmeric. And you may be wondering why there's two lots of chili. Well, they have different flavours. So, but if you really, really don't like too much chili, just leave off the chili powder. Um, I've got a little bit of Gujarati cooking etiquette as well. So this is bread. Who likes bread? Who likes rice? Don't know. We always have bread first and then rice, and you never ever eat your rice with your bread, that's just wrong. <laughs> Don't do it. If you come on to my house, I'll be really upset. Burpee is really good. Belching at the table is seen as a good thing. Don't be embarrassed. The cook will like, really love you for it. So uh, my husband's really happy. Well, really glad about that. Use your hands. Always use your right hand because you've been to the toilet with your left hand, supposedly. That's what they say, anyway. Um, so use your hands, it's a lot more fun, uh, and you just need to pinch your curry. It takes a bit of practice, it's a bit like chopsticks. Once you get going, it's good. Uh, wash your hands before and after, because you've just eaten chilli, and you know, really don't want to be rubbing that in your eyes or anywhere else. Um, so be really careful. Um, was my next one. So, I've got a couple of quick recipes. If you can drop these down in 15 seconds, you're going to be a record holder. We use the same curry paste for uh, me. And it goes in this order all the way down. I will post my slides somewhere if it helps. And it's literally to taste. So you just chuck it all together uh, and stick your meat in. And you can use anything. Um, this is one of my favourites. It's a fish curry. Again, chuck it all in and then add your fishy prawns and just wait till they're poached. And it's done. Really, really simple. And once you've got your basics, it will be fine. And then rice. Everyone loves cooking rice, don't they? 
actually really difficult to do. So always use basmati, wash it first, and then simmer it until it's cooked, and then drain off all your water, and then whatever's finished, stick it in the microwave for two minutes, and you'll have a brilliant rice.